and welcome to our long-awaited Optimus Prime tutorial. So this is our very first costume that we ever built and we borrowed some designs from several different areas. We're definitely not the first people to make an Optimus Prime costume, but we believe that our costume is the best for several reasons. One thing that our costume has is, of course, the blaster guns, which are removable guns. You can turn them into double blasters. And the last thing that we've done with our Optimus Prime costume is the addition of the Matrix of Leadership. We will walk you through how to build all these extra little features so that you will end up with having the ultimate Optimus Prime cardboard costume. The first place that we start is actually deciding on the underclothing. There's a couple of reasons why we do this. Uh, the first reason is because your child will most likely be wearing this as their Halloween costume to school and there's no way that they're going to be able to spend the whole day at school and sit at their desk while wearing their full costume. So you can see here we've got uh, some shoes, pants, shirt, and even some uh, Transformers Optimus Prime socks to finish it off. The second reason why we choose the clothing first is because uh, ultimately we are going to be color matching the rest of the costume to the clothing. And you will find that fabrics only come in a few colors, whereas you can go to the paint counter at the local hardware store and get any color that you want. These here we got from Walmart on clearance for $12. They're actually Spider-Man shoes, but the colors were right. We've got the colors that we were looking for. Now, this whole section here and this whole section here is full of Spider-Man logos. So all we did was take a piece of silver duct tape and taped it down and cut around the edges to remove. So there's no trace of Spider-Man. Uh, this shirt here was just a standard Old Navy shirt along here. It said Old Navy uh, So we, we took it mostly because it was a solid color Afterwards, we just sewed on our own pattern which started off first with a piece of black fabric going around a smaller piece of red fabric on top and then we ended with putting the silver and we sewed on a few buttons What you can do instead is get different colored uh, vinyl or a fabric, both of which are available as an iron-on, and then cut out first a larger black piece, put a smaller red piece on top, and then a silver accents on top of that, and then use it as an iron-on where either the fabric or the vinyl and we can iron that right on. And we did the same for the back of the shirt as well, just to make it a little more interesting. Again, we used a black fabric for the outline and then put silver fabric on top to finish the design. So the first step in planning the body of the costume or the uh, truck cab is you want to make sure that this is going to fit properly on your child so we are guided by the actual measurements of your child so when your child is lying down so let's see let's say that is their bum the cab is going to start from where their shoulders are and it's going to end just around under their bum maybe even a little bit one inch 
above their bum and this is important so that they can still sit down in the costume when they are fully dressed other measurements that you need to take is the length of the nose or the hood to make sure that it accommodates their head we also have to take one final measurement which is the width of the child's shoulders in our case this measurement is 10 inches Now, unlike some of the other tutorials that may be out there, they spend their time gluing a lot of small pieces together. But I find that working with one big piece ends up with a much nicer looking and more importantly, a much stronger costume than some of the other approaches. So with our basic dimensions in place, so here we have 10 inches, which is the width of our child's shoulders, 12 inches, which is the height of the cab, and 14 inches is the length from their head to their bum. And we're not going to worry about their legs right now. Uh, so if it helps you envision a little bit, we are going to put the windows, the front windows, the front windshield over here. This will be the front. This will be the top. This will be the bottom. Of the costume. The last thing that we need to do is to make a hole for the child's head to fit through so what I do is I measure a middle line here now in our case our when we made this costume our child was four years old so his head measured about seven and one quarter inches so I'll give myself about a quarter inch extra here and draw an opening. If you need a little bit bigger opening, go for it. It really depends on the size of your child's head. Now, one thing that we do try to do here is this entire length is 12 inches, but we like to keep a ratio. To get the truck looking more or less proportioned, it's a one to two ratio, which means that whatever this height is of the cab windows windshield will be half of this section here, which is the body of the car. So for us, it's 12 inches. So I like to go more or less, this part is one third and this part is two thirds. And that will give us the general idea of uh, the proportions that we need. Basically the rule of thumb is in this two thirds section, you wanna make the hole as big as possible for your kid's head to fit through. This section being four inches, this section being eight, which is a one to two ratio uh, the other measurement that we need to do uh, this might be a good time to talk about choice of cardboard this here is double corrugated cardboard it's got two layers of corrugation it's heavier but it's a lot lot stronger I would recommend uh, going with the stronger stuff although we will later on in the tutorial talk about ways of reinforcing single ply cardboard so 
the other thing that we will do is line it up here and draw a line so that we end up with a thin section that we will end up cutting out. Now, if you find that this circle is still not big enough to fit your child's head in, it's perfectly okay. What you can do is always extend it out a little bit as an oval and extend it out sideways. So your child can always turn their head sideways as they're putting the costume in. But there is a limitation as to how much room you'll have here, which here is basically a quarter inch. And here also maximum you want is a quarter inch. Now, one thing that you guys will also notice is that we have these little one inch sections here, 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 and here. And those ones we are actually going to be using to finish the final construction of our cab so that we can get all of the corners connected properly nice and strong. So we've cut out the circle for the head and the little notch, which is the thickness of a cardboard, if you can see that. Okay. And uh, the last thing that we need to cut out are the spaces for the arms. And what I did, I started from the top edge and worked my way down to approximately, let's say, seven inches. So the whole length here is seven inches. I try to line up these holes, this area here, with where my child's arms are going to be. So I give myself one and a quarter here, a total width of four and a half. And left over here is approximately two and one quarter. Now, those measurements will depend on the actual measurement of your child. And we're going to cut all of this area out. And then we can go ahead and start preparing all of our fold lines. So I use one of these little plastic spatulas and what you do is you push down really hard and draw along the line crushing down the cardboard a little bit so that it is able to fold along that lines and what this process will do it will make sure that you have nice straight folds without warping the cardboard in the wrong place and then we'll continue along all these lines as well Now, it's also important, these little one inch flaps, that we are going to fold those down as well. with 
is a custom sized box that will fit your child properly. Like so. However, there is an issue where around the head and around the arms, these are areas that will have lots of wear and tear. So it's important to reinforce those areas. And I went ahead and cut out a piece here. Now, it's important to notice the corrugation pattern here was this way, but with the piece that I cut out, the corrugation piece runs this way. And what that will do, it will give you a nice extra support. The cardboard will be much stronger if you oppose the pattern of the corrugation. So you see when we fold that part up and that part up, we want to make sure that this is just big enough to fit nicely inside. And we're going to line this up so that it lines up with the holes. The two holes line up. And if you want to be absolutely sure that it fits properly, what you can do is fold these up. So that you are happy that this is placed exactly where you want it to be. Once you're happy with that, just push down and wait for the glue to cool down. What I've done is cut out a couple other U shape which line up these so that it matches the curve and gives you double thickness. But you want to leave yourself a little bit of a gap here and here so that when you fold it up, it will actually accommodate this other piece that you put inside. Now, what we want to do is along the sides here add some reinforcement because this is going to be pretty flimsy. So we'll go ahead and open it up. So with our box opened up, we're going to put in these sticks. Now these are 1 inch by 12 inch uh, stir sticks that you get from the paint counter. You use them to stir paint. They're very lightweight. They've got some flex to them, but they're also quite rigid to hold everything in place. So what we'll do is apply some glue line it up along the bottom and that will just give us that little bit of extra strength so that when your child is bending up and down and transforming over and over again that they're not going to cause fatigue to the actual cardboard and we'll do the same for the other side as well. Normally I would go ahead and paint the inside now, uh, makes life a little bit easier. Uh, but since I'm going to be using black straps, it's going to be easier for you guys to see if I put in the straps first and then paint later. So what I did is I measured from here to here about six inches this is approximately where the waist of your child will be and I have a piece of wood that I cut you'll also notice that I cut out little notches on the cardboard here to help accommodate that wood these will be the front shoulder straps these are just regular backpack straps polypropylene or nylon straps the length 
of these straps are about 17 inches, let's say. We've got two shorter ones as well, which we'll be attaching to the other side. And those ones are approximately 11 inches, so between 11 and 12 inches. So we'll do the long ones first. Those ones are going to be attached to the bottom of Optimus Prime. Um, the last thing we need to do is a waistband. Now, one thing that I've noticed with most costumes is that they do not sit properly. That's one of the most common mistakes with the Optimus Prime is that the whole costume is tilted backwards and then it's choking on their neck. And that's because they don't have a strap to go around their waist to hold it in place. With these straps, you're going to have a perfect fit every time. The costume will always sit the way that it's supposed to, and it'll be a lot easier for your children to walk around, move around. I'm going to use my Dremel tool and cut out a couple notches, say about uh, two inches inwards. Rather than just gluing the straps in place, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the cardboard. So eventually the cardboard will fail and the straps will pull away. So it's important to have some type of a backing that will actually hold the straps in place. We will first glue these straps. Now in this case, more is better than less. You want to make sure that you get some really, really, really good coverage of the glue. Just wipe off the extra. This is what's going to set your costume apart from the many, 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 many others that you've seen on the internet because it's going to be much more comfortable for your child to wear and it's always going to be sitting in the right position. For the waist strap, this is different. Uh, it's actually double-sided Velcro. And the reason I use Velcro is because it just makes it a lot easier for you to connect and disconnect your child's waist once they're wearing the costume. Uh, if you try to use buttons or clips, it's just a nightmare uh, to do. We can now go and glue the waistband in place. You'll see that it's offset a little bit lower. I'm using that black line as a guide which uh, more or less lines up with those notches. Now for comfort try to keep the soft side in so that it's not going to be uncomfortable for your child when they wear it. We're going to take our last piece here and glue that into place and we're going to do that by again applying a very liberal amount of glue we want to make sure that this holds and it doesn't have to look pretty so most important is to make sure that it sticks and as we're putting it in place we're going to be careful to put these notches into the Velcro strap. And once that's in place, we push everything down. And what that does is this piece of wood distributes all of the stress from carrying the weight on the shoulders and the waist and spreads everything nice and evenly to make sure that your cardboard will not fail. You might want to put a little bit of extra glue over here as well. You can just wrap that up a little bit. And once we're satisfied that this wooden piece has been attached properly, we can go ahead and we'll do the same for the other side. I went to the local fabric store and got these little uh, clips. What do you call them? They're the same plastic uh, adjusters that you get or that you have on regular backpacks so we need two of those 
And what that's going to do is it will allow you to make adjustments later on to make sure that everything fits properly. And what we do, we just fish it through and give yourself maybe about an inch. Now, on our original costume, we actually sewed these into place. But again, not everybody has access to a sewing machine. So a really easy way that I found to uh, improvise is to actually just glue it in place. So we'll use our glue gun. If you want to be 100% sure, one trick that I do is I use a regular stapler. The strap is going to rest over your child's shoulders. So this is going to be the outside. So when I do put in the stapler, I want to make sure that the sharp parts are facing outside. So the inside is a nice smooth edge, so there's no risk that it will uh, bother your child at all and if you want to be absolutely sure you can always put just a little dab of glue over the sharp parts to cover up those sharp edges now you may want to skip this step but I found that it's very useful as your child grows and even the costume itself uh, might stretch certain ways uh, that it's quite helpful to have adjustable straps as a finishing off two staples and that will never ever ever come apart You want to estimate more or less where is your child's waist. So you want to be above their bum, but below their rib cage, ideally. And then I measure about an inch and a half inwards, like so. And that will give me a pretty good idea of where I want to attach the other straps. Now, using this design, our Optimus Prime is now almost two years old he's gone to multiple shows Halloween's and just messing around or in the house and he's still going strong and once those are in place we just take our wooden strip and we will hold everything down and once again that's just going to help spread the weight evenly along the length of the cardboard and it's just going to hold everything nicely in place. One more strap that we need to put in place to make sure that everything functions properly and it will be on these longer strips and the, the problem that we're trying to solve is that when the costume is hanging, when it's hanging on the child's shoulders uh, they have a tendency sometimes of sliding off of their shoulders. So these longer straps will actually be right on the child's back, right behind their neck. And uh, what I do is I put in one more strap and what that will give you is a cross strap, a cross brace, so that they can still squeeze their head through but they will not slide off of their shoulders and it will rest quite comfortably on their back so we can glue that and once it's glued into place on that side all we do is fold that over and glue it onto the other side finishing with some more staples again this is an alternative if you don't have a sewing machine. If you do have a sewing machine then you can go ahead and sew these straps and you'll get a much nicer finish. But since this will be on the inside of the costume it's not that much of a concern. It will be very unlikely that anyone will see it. I have here a little piece of EVA foam. This is the uh, foam mats that you can get for like a children's room or this one was uh, from the Home Depot 
which is used in garages. And I made it about four inches wide. And let's say 14, about 18 inches long. And what I'll do is actually attach it on the inside so it gives a little bit of a pad for your child to rest on. Now, because we will be doing some extra work for the matrix of leadership later, it's important that for now, we just glue it into place up to the wood. Now the EVA foam, you should be okay using a hot glue gun. As far as I know, it doesn't melt that easily. As with all of our other cardboard costumes, we use a latex caulking. Make sure that it's paintable. And uh, we like to finish off all of the edges of the costume wherever possible. Now some of them, most of them you'll be able to do after assembly, but uh, on this inside edge here and here, it's going to be very difficult to do. So it's probably a good idea to do it now ahead of time. Uh, a couple of reasons that we use the caulking is A, it uh, seals up the edge. Uh, so that it adds a little bit of strength but it's it remains flexible so it won't crack on you you can paint it and it will give you a nicer surface to paint so that your edges are finished off a little bit better so we just go around again since this is the inside this is going to be more for functionality than aesthetics you definitely want to be a little bit more careful when you are doing it on the outside. But here, we don't really need to worry too much. All we want to do is seal up those edges so that when your child is wearing the costume, they're not going to be fraying the edges of the cardboard. And you just want to make sure you cover up all those holes. Now, it might not look pretty, but it doesn't have to. That's not the point of this exercise. As long as it's smooth, because we're going to be painting everything anyways. What we do with this piece here is this will fold down and tuck in and it just gives that little bit of extra padding. So what we end up with is a box that looks very similar to what some of the other people have uh, tried to do when imitating our costumes. But uh, we solve uh, quite a few problems. Uh, most of the other costumes that I see, the shoulders are hanging on here. This is a weak point, so it's going to cause problems. Another problem with the other costumes is that instead of sitting upright in a perpendicular vertical motion or, or position, it tends to fall backwards. So the poor kid's neck keeps digging into here. When we have this foam rubber piece, it will actually push on their chest. So it will push the costume forward. At the same time, because you have this waistband, it will also keep the whole costume from tilting backwards. So most Optimus Primes you see, the chest is recessed and the bottom part is sticking out and it looks like Optimus is tilted. Whereas we get, with this design, we get the perfect posture. And there's no pressure on the cardboard. Everything is hanging on the child's shoulders. I would recommend doing it before we finish gluing our box together and that is just to paint the inside. It's going to be a lot easier to reach all of this area here before it's all glued together. Now you might have to still do some painting on the inside but the more you can get done now 
the easier it will be for you later. These are little testers. You can get them for about four to five dollars at Home Depot at the paint counter and they'll mix any color that you want. It's a regular wall paint, a latex house wall paint. And then we're just going to paint as much as we can. Now on our original Optimus Prime, I, had, I, I painted everything blue, which also worked quite well. Uh, the blue was dark enough that with the lack of light and shadows, it created the same effect. But I figure this time I'll go all black. The goal here is you just basically you don't want anybody to see what's inside of the costume, right? That's deep inside the machinery. Nobody needs to know what's in there. You'll also notice that I left these sides unpainted. The reason I did that is that when we start gluing on these flaps, I prefer to have a clean surface. The glue will hold better to the bare cardboard rather than onto the painted cardboard. Take one of our flaps here and fold and push down. So there is our completed box or truck cab. The front windows will be here. The hood will come up there. And as you can see from the outside, it's deceptively simple. It looks like we did almost no work at all. And this actually is how most other Optimus Prime costumes are done, which is just a simple box and they cut out a hole for the head and the arms. But after following me through all the exercises, you'll see this is where the real magic happens. And they'll be able to run around, walk, jump, uh, basically do anything and wear the costume all day and it will always stay in position and, and be very, very comfortable for them. The last thing that we want to do with this box is finishing up the exposed edges. So around here and here and these seams as well. We're going to use some caulking. We might have to do two layers, but uh, uh, you basically want to get it as smooth as possible. Uh, one other thing that I forgot to mention, there is a reason why I chose to make everything out of one piece rather than the multiple pieces glued together from all angles that you might see in other tutorials. And the reason being is uh, when the child is in costume and uh, walking around, there's going to be certain parts that they're going to see. Most of the time, the adults are looking from the top down. So it's really important. You can see here, there's no seam here. There's no seam here or here or here. So even when you're in truck mode, you still have at least one really, really clean seam. And that basically is going to give you a nicer finished look and you really only have to worry about these edges here with siliconing. So uh, you're saving yourself by using one continuous piece of cardboard. You are saving yourself a lot of work in that respect uh, because you already have the finished, nice and smooth finished lines. And it's also stronger because it's not glued. It's one continuous piece.